Hi everybody, this is Danica Jones and welcome to Custody Matters. I have my wonderful guest, Wendy Perry, and today's special guest is uh, Melanie Anthony. Uh, what we're gonna be talking about today has to do with being a stepmom. So I think that's a, gonna be some very valuable information for, for our viewers today. Wendy, tell us a little bit about uh, Melanie. Well, um, I met Melanie actually when I was giving an educational training and presentation to a school district in Texas. Um, she attended the uh, training presentation that I gave that was about parental alienation and co-parenting. So that's how we connected. And, you know, the universe knows when you need to meet somebody in particular, you know, there just tends to be this connection that happens. And so there we were. And then she contacted me afterwards and said, oh, by the way, I've got this organization and um, we're having a conference coming up and would you like to be a presenter? And I said, of course. And so I, I, I'm just so thrilled that we met. And so Melanie's organization is called Step Moms Alive. And uh, she is based out of Georgetown, Texas, which is, I would call it a suburb of Austin. And uh, so Melanie, uh, why don't you tell us about Stepmoms Alive. When did you found it? Uh, why was it founded? And, and what's the mission of Stepmoms Alive? How, how does it serve stepmoms and families? Well, thanks uh, both of y'all for having me on the show. I appreciate that very much, getting that the voice out for stepmoms. Um, I've been a stepmom for going on 13 years now. And uh, about eight or nine years ago, um, I was newly married and had two stepdaughters and thought that I knew what I was doing, which I didn't. Um, neither did my husband. <laughs> we had rose colored glasses on and um, love was going to conquer all. And uh, I guess we just didn't know what we didn't know. Um, but shortly after we were married, and actually it wasn't even three years, shortly after we were married, maybe a year, I became pregnant. We had a child together and brought our third child into the marriage. And um, thinking again, I got this, I got it figured out. I know how to be a stepmom. I'm not sure what I based my knowledge on because I had read nothing nor knew anything. Um, and we crashed and burned quickly. Um, there was a lot of uh, stress with the biological mother, my husband's ex, um, regarding her emotional issues and visitation. Um, we had brought a new baby into the family. There was that stress, a good stress, but nonetheless, it was stress. And we were newly married. Um, I had been single for quite some time. We were older. We were in our 40s. Um, so it crashed and burned quickly, meaning um, things escalated. There was a lot of stress on our marriage, on our family. And I didn't have anywhere to turn. I had no support. I mean, I'm like, who do I talk to? Who do I find out that I'm not really crazy. I know I'm not crazy. Like, why am I feeling these things? And who do, where do I go? Um, 12 years ago, there was not a lot, of, there were not a lot of resources at all. Um, and so I just started digging and actually social media back then was nothing compared to now, but I started digging on social media. I met a few, uh, people, a few groups got involved in there uh, in the groups. And, and then I decided, um, I'd write a book because I'm like, there are no resources out there. And so a good friend of mine, my co-author and I, we wrote a book. And then from there, my ministry was born, it evolved. Um, but there was still that, that, that thing. It was God in the back of my head saying, you need to do more. And I'm like, what do you want me to do? Well, so I'm all about social media. I think it's great, but there's something about human connection. Um, and so I just stepped out on a limb and last year decided to put on my first conference. Um, yeah, I have a lot of, a lot of friends, a lot of support. I know a lot of people in the ministry. So finding the people really wasn't the issue, but of course it, it's a nonprofit. I had no money. So I had to, um, obviously find somewhere that would accommodate that in the lack of my resources. And it was a huge success. Um, Thankfully, it was about 50 women here in downtown Round Rock, and it was in a Friday night and all day Saturday, and the feedback was just phenomenal. I was floored at how women would come in and say, 
I, I just thought I was at my end's rope and I walked out and I felt like I wasn't crazy. I felt like there was hope. I felt like I had something tangible, something to hold on to and that I was understood for a change. So I ramped it up a little for this 2020 and they wanted more. So I'm going to give them more. <laughs> I stepped out on a limb and I'm doing it now. Um, I'm adding one more night and doing it um, in a hotel and bringing in a lot of, you know, it's really only, it's really, this conference allows for women to get real. They are not allowed to tell other people how they feel because they'll call them crazy. Or they'll say, it's just, it's just, you know, you knew what you were getting into when you got married, which we don't like to hear that. That's, that's pretty much an insult. So this conference really allows the stepmom to feel um, like she can be authentic and real and raw with her emotions. And so I wanted to bring in topics like parent alienation. I mean, that is a huge topic that really isn't talked about very much because I think it's really complex. Um, it's very emotional um, for the people that are affected by it, for the people that are the alienators. It's just an emotional uh, topic, but I'm bringing in a lot of sensitive topics uh, and hopefully it'll, you know, cause that's what changes people's hearts when they know they're not alone, then healing, there's healing in that and strength. And there's also healing in numbers, knowing that if you meet just one or two people at a conference you become lifelong friends because that girlfriend gets you now. Mm -hmm. You just pick up the phone and you call her. So that's pretty much how it evolved. You know, this speaks to so many of our viewers. Uh, I mean, there's like a huge percentage of us who that our marriages didn't, didn't last. We still have hope and we want to, to find the love of our life. And a lot of times that means that they have children. Of course we have, you know, we bring ch children to the mix and the thing is, is the children didn't choose, you know, for the marriage to happen or the, you know, the remarriage to happen. And there's a lot of resistance to that. And uh, I guess what my experience of, because I've been a stepmom, is that uh, you just sort of expect these children to embrace you as your own, as the way that your children embrace you. And I'm, t I'm not even talking about parental alienation being involved in the situation, just like trying to blend a step family. Uh, takes takes a long time, longer than people would think, and it is a completely different animal than the original intact family. And people don't realize that until they jump right in. Mm -hmm. So That's so so true. And I think you know, organic families or first time families are not even made up, or I should say, blended families are not even made up of the same ingredients that an organic family is our first time family. It's completely, like you said, a different animal, yeah. different, different thing. And, you know, in churches, they're, they're always, you know, they're doing things to try to bring uh, families together and, and, you know, for, with family harmony. And what it was my experience is that the church didn't have anything for the, for the step family to, to lean upon until I found uh, Ron Deal's curriculum mm -hmm. and actually taught it in my church. And it was, oh, thank you. <laughs> that, that it was like in that process, uh, m the light bulb went off with me that, oh my gosh, that's mm -hmm. why my stepkids treat me the way they treat me. <laughs> and um, yeah. I realized they're just, you know, they haven't cooked long enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we all share um, a love of Ron Deal and his family life blended ministry and for those viewers who are watching and if you've never heard of ron deal or family life blended you, you've just got to check him out and i follow him on all i think all of his social media outlets um, but i really love following him on instagram because he does you know just little quotes and memes that you know it only takes a second to look at it but it really it, it really can speak to you and and, and just get you on your day with a positive thought and, and a better understanding of something if you are a step parent or you know in any way with a blended family so he's got a great podcast too he does and, a weekly podcast and you were interviewed by him yeah I, I, I love Ron Ron is great I love Ron yeah yeah he's really he's really awesome so was, now you now oh i'm sorry go ahead danica you know it meant so much to learn and to just be enlightened with what 
Ron was able to um, teach me that I put it in my co-parenting curriculum. And, you know, and I talk about that because it is so, when parents are divorcing and they have to take the family stabilization course, it is important for them to know what they're getting into next from many of these, these parents. So yeah, that's a real, um, that's a frustration of mine because, you know, if, if somebody had pulled me aside six months before I got married and said, Hey, here's your, here's your survival guide. Okay. Here is, you know, blended family 101, but nobody did because nobody knew how, if I could, if I could find those people that are about to get married and tell them not, 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 not to get married, but say, look, these are the things that are important to understand about blending your family. That would be great. Like a pre getting into a premarital situation or something like that. I had a couple in uh, my husband and I lead a marriage small group for remarrieds. And I had a gal that I connected with three step moms alive that was engaged. And she's like, can we come? I said, absolutely mm -hmm. come and just educate yourself. And I gave her the name of my counselor that I refer everybody to because they wanted to be in counseling. They wanted to educate themselves on blended family dynamics and they did it all before they got married. So I think that's great. Well, counseling is, I highly recommend counseling before there are problems because yes. by the time there are problems, you're focusing on the problems at which in many situations actually amplify the problem. And it's almost like that, that last stop gap before a breakup. Yeah, but you know, so to get into counseling, as soon as you know that you're going, that this is like a, a possible, you know, long-term commitment, definitely get into counseling. And it's critical that if, if counseling is the avenue you take, which I love counseling, I think it's healthy and to be proactive, but you've got to find a counselor that understands the dynamics of blended families. Um, because any, any counselor isn't going to do, even though it might do something, but understanding those dynamics is really really critical in in having success in in counseling you know well and melanie you you i think you mentioned love conquers conquers all you know in the beginning of our talk right, right. and I, I think when you go into um being a blended family and you're going to become a step parent because of a remarriage you know i think you've got those rose colored glasses on and and that's what you think you think well i you know i love my you know, soon to be spouse and I love their kids. And so, you know, whatever happens, it's just going to be, you know, we've got enough love to get through it. It's not going to be a big deal. And uh, being a step mom, step parent, it, it's hard, even if, even if your spouse is great, and even if your stepkids are awesome, um, it, it's still, it's, it's still hard. You know, um, you're going to have some serious things that you disagree about at some point. Um, there, there are a lot of boundaries involved with being a step parent um, that really kind of tug at your heart because in your heart, I, I guess I'll speak for myself, in, you know, in my heart, it's like I want to sort of, I guess, mother, you know, my stepkids as much as I do my own kids, but you have to have some boundaries. And so um, it's just a lot to negotiate. And, and even if your stepkids are amazing and, and everything's pretty great, you're still going to have your feelings hurt when you're a step parent. Absolutely. And I think yeah. it's important to remember that that times a million, I mean, when you marry your, your spouse, your husband, you marry his kids, you marry his, his problems, you marry his ex, you marry, I mean, for lack of a better word, you marry, not just, you marry into all of it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what makes it, I mean, yeah, my stepkids, honestly, my stepkids are great. Mm -hmm. They're great. I have issues with the bio mom. And so, so speaking of that, so uh, parental alienation is going to be one of the topics at your upcoming conference. And yes. I'm going to do a presentation on that. Thank you yes. for asking me. Thank you. No, I'm thank super, you. I'm super excited. Yeah, it's going to um, be awesome. But besides that topic, what other topics um, will you be touching on at the conference? And we should say it's in January mm -hmm. in Austin, Texas. But what, yeah, other, um, what other topics will you be touching on? And, and what, kind of, what kind of activities and things 
um, can people look forward to uh, when they come to the conference? Yeah, so um, one of the things I'm going to be talking on is identity um, because so many women think I'm just a stepmom. No, 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 no. You're not just a stepmom. So identity and kind of finding balance in your role as a stepmom, I'm gonna, we're going to talk about that. We're going to get deep and talk about suicide. We're going to talk about depression. Um, my co-author is a suicide survivor, Laura Beth. Um, so we're going to talk about suicide. Um, women or stepmoms tend to get very depressed. Um, I think depression is, is something that needs to be talked about. So she's going to talk about that. She, um, she was a stepmom. She no longer is. Um, but thankfully God spared her life so she can talk about the hope that comes from all of it. Uh, Laura Petherbridge is going to speak on the childless stepmom. There is a large percentage of stepmoms that do not have their own biological children. Um, that's a whole nother painful dynamic for most of them because either they talked about it and they were okay before they were married and then they got married and, and they're like, maybe we're not. Good. So there's a lot of dynamics. Maybe there's a lot of infertility. So that's, that's a very sensitive, tender topic. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Lori Sims from South Carolina. She's the nacho mama, nacho kids. She's nacho <laughs> kids. She's going to be talking about stepping back, not ignoring or not being a part of but teaching and explaining to the stepmoms, how do you step back from all the drama um, when they're really not your kids, they're your husband's kids, they're your spouse's kids. So um, stepping back. Um, and then I'm going to actually add some personal testimonies in there um, to the platform. And I'm also going to have the men get up there. So I'm going to have, my husband doesn't get a choice. So he gets to be up there. My <laughs> husband, my husband's just a bio dad. And he goes, yeah, I'm just a bio dad, but he's a bio dad. He's not a step parent. So he's the father to all of our children. So I'm going to have him. And then I will have just a bio or just a stepdad up there, a man that's just a stepdad. And then I'm going to have a gentleman up there. That's a stepdad and a biological father. And so, um, I think getting their perspective and living with a stepmom, um, is going to be really helpful. And then we're going to have some fun things and some connection. Women really want to connect. They want to hear each other's stories. So, um, and then I'm going to have an attorney. Uh, she doesn't know it yet, but she did come last or this year. So I'm going to ask her this year. I'm going to have an attorney and a counselor. Um, and so, yeah, we're just going to spice it up a little and, and bring some real intimacy is what my real goal is. You know, I'm super, oh, go ahead. Well, what I was wanting to bring up is that, you know, we talk, we, when we think of step families, we think of children that are still needing to be raised. Um, mm -hmm. Something that we may not think about unless we are a step parent is there's a, even when parents marry and they're, the, and all they have is adult children. Um, and so they're done raising the children. They decide to, um, you know, end their marriages that they raised their kids with, and now they're remarried. Um, and so, and I know for me personally, not only was I st a stepmom to children I raised, I was also a, um, a stepdaughter to my stepmom that, uh, and she married my father after I was like in my twenties. Mm -hmm. And I get the, there was still was a loyalty conflict there was that still that insecurity of feeling like, wow, you know, is she going to replace me in the heart of my father? So it was this, still this competition and there's the, she's not my mom. And I mean, all of these feelings, whether they're rational or irrational, they're there, no matter how old you are. Young or old. I mean, adult stepchildren, that's a whole nother, um, topic. I will be, I think Laura will be speaking on that some too as adult stepkids because there's still that loyalty bond, no matter how old they are, it's still there. Yeah, yeah definitely. I've got three stepkids and um, they're uh, in their mid twenties and one of them is 30. And uh, it's, I would say it's, you know, it's probably easier than if they were younger and still living at home. But it, it does, it still comes with all of the step parent challenges, you know, those boundaries and, and sometimes, 
you know, you disagree on some things. And especially, you know, the, the closer you are and the more involved you are with the kids, you know, you're, you're just going to have things come up. So I'm really glad that you're going to touch on yeah. the subject of, of adult children. Adult yeah, people forget about the adults. They think they're adults, so they don't have there are any issues. That's not true. <laughs> not true. Not true. Well, I'm, I'm super excited. And yes, can, I, can I just share with the viewers why I'm so excited about this conference? Absolutely. Okay, absolutely. Right. Please okay. do. Okay. 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 Well, a couple of things. Um, I get to present about parental alienation to a new audience, which is stepmoms. And um, that's really great because, to be honest, um, in our world of parental alienation education, a lot of times stepmoms get vilified, right? And we don't stop to think about that um, a lot of alienated dads are remarried. So there is a stepmom there who is, you know, hurting for her husband and, and trying to support him. So I think it's really important that we talk about this topic at the conference. Um, the other, other reason I'm excited is um, it's going to be a fun weekend. And for those who are not familiar with the Austin, Texas area. It's in an area called the Domain. Yes. Um, yep. And the Domain, get, yeah, so fun. Yeah. The domain yeah. is so, it's so cool. Um, so my, you know, I have an alienated daughter. She's 30 years old. She went to the university. Um, she went to UT Austin and uh -huh. um, we were, we were very, very close um, when she was a freshman in college and I would go to Austin and see her a lot. And she actually worked at a store in the domain. So we would, you know, oh. go visit her work and we would go to dinner and I know it's grown a lot now and there's a lot of shops and restaurants and it's, it's really beautiful. So it's just, it's a really great area to have a weekend getaway. And then I think the other reason I'm really excited is, um, like I said, I am a stepmom, um, but I don't usually talk about it because I'm always talking about parental alienation right. and you know um so I'm just really really excited to have a weekend um where I can connect with other stepmoms you know and talk about all of those things you know talk about the the difficulties um the boundaries and and also when you get your feelings hurt um because I, I know we all go through it and like I said I'm, I'm a stepmom I go through it but it's not something that I usually get an opportunity to talk about. So, um, yeah, it's going to, it's going to be a great weekend. Yeah, it really it'll is. Be awesome. Well, you know, my husband was the one when we read through that, we scrolled through the, the Georgetown ISD, um, the community part that has all the events coming. He's like, you know, you need to go listen to Wendy Perry. And I'm like, yeah, 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 whatever. And then I went and looked, <laughs> looked back at it myself and I'm like, I need to go listen to her. And so, um, my husband's, he's my, he's my best friend, but he's my, he's my business guy. He's, he's mm -hmm. usually trying to, to uh, convince me to do things. But, um, so I was really, really thankful he did that. So. Well, I am going to share one more time, the, uh, webpage where, uh, those, um, our viewers can go to, you see it's stepmomsalive.com and it has how, um, everything that you need to know about the conference and how to register. So that's awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for being on our show today. Thank it's you so much for having me. I love the topic. I mean, it's just such mm -hmm. a valuable topic. It's, yeah. it's something that's touched my life and, um, and has, I'm sure it's made a difference in the lives of my participants who, who take my co-parenting class and, um, definitely something that people totally get caught off guard with when they go into a, yes. a remarriage. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. And we will, um, uh, Wendy, do you have any mm -hmm. updates on, oh, in your closed group? I want you to share about that. The, oh, um, the, the membership community. Yes. How's it going? Yes. It's going really, really well. Um, actually, um, last night we had one of our support group meetings. We've got two support group meetings per month and, um, everybody's just really, enjoying having support group meetings that they can attend on a regular basis and we have a private discussion area that is completely private and it, it, it's going really really well it's just it's a safe place for people to be able to like I said have private discussions 
um, that are not seen by anybody else and to have live one on, um, you know, face to face support group meetings. We use Zoom technology just like we're using for this. So it's been really great. Um, I, I, we would like to have some more grandparents join, some grandparents that are alienated due to parental alienation. Um, we've got a couple in there, but they have expressed like, oh, we wish we had more grandparents. So, you know, if any grandparents are watching and, and if you don't have a relationship with your grandkids because of parental alienation, please get in touch with me. We would love to, to have you join our little community. So, yeah, thank you for asking. It's going really well. That's um, why you had that post today about grandparents, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, a lot of people don't, a lot of people don't think about that, that, you know, if you are an alienated parent, if your child won't have a relationship with you because of parental alienation, they probably won't have a relationship with your parents right. either. And so right. um, it's extremely heartbreaking and cruel for those, for the grandparents. The grandparents are innocent, you know, they just want to be grandparents. Um, so it, it, it's really hard on them. And I think sometimes they get a little bit forgotten. Um, but you know, it, their hearts are breaking. So, so yeah, if anybody is in that situation, let me know. Speaking of grandparents, I have my, my second grandchild came two days ago. Oh, congratulations. I'm, I'm really excited about it. I'm, my first grandchild lives across the country from me and it was, and it's been a contentious, uh, contentious situation between mom and dad. And, and, um, and it's always that worry because you've, if you've experienced parental alienation like we have, it, you, you're wondering, is it going to go down the next generation? And um, I have sons, so then there's that added concern because even though society is getting to where there's the shared parenting situation, there's still that underlying, especially when they're infants, that the moms um, get to dictate um, how things go with with the children and stuff like that and and being the mom of 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 sons i you know there is the, always that wonder you know if things don't work out am i going to be out in the cold as a grandparent so mm -hmm. but um yeah my so i continue to build bridges with um you know the mothers of my um grandchildren to you know because i think it really is if you if you leave it up just to the child. I mean, obviously you have to be respectful of your child's uh, wishes in regards to how they're going to deal with their custody situation, but just somehow be a bridge when things are friendly because right. it might make a difference when, if right. things go bad. Right. Thank yeah. you for all you guys do for the alienated parents. I appreciate that. It's well, a, thank, it's a thank you. That talked about so much more, especially with stepmoms. Um, because I don't think those, I don't think they know what to do. Because I, I can think of a particular friend that I know in Dallas, whose husband is, com whose husband has been completely alienated from his kids, and it's hard on. She's she's married to him, and it's hard on her. Um, so yeah, just keep doing what y'all are doing. I appreciate that. Yeah. Sp speaking of stepmom, something that I have found um, doing this for ten years, and and I don't know, Danica might have found this also, is that. The stepmoms who are married to alienated dads, they are, they are, they are so supportive of their husbands. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the, the alienated dads, they just don't know what to do. So they just kind of don't do anything. Right. And, right. and it's, and it's the stepmoms who step up and say, this is not okay. And let's right. try, let's try to make this right. So I just want to give that positive plug out there to all the stepmoms who are married to alienated dads. They're, they're really a force and they're really trying their hardest to, to make it so that these kids are able to receive love and support and have relationships with both of their parents. So absolutely. Good point. Absolutely. All right, Wendy, would you like to um, wrap up the show? Well, I would. I would like to remind everyone watching that parental alienation can happen to anyone, so it should matter to everyone. Please join us in educating everyone about parental alienation and proper co-parenting. All right. Awesome. All right. I'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Take care.